Welcome back to the channel everybody. In this video today we are going to talk about the five common mistakes people make when building their email list and why it does more harm than good. Oh hell no! If you haven't seen our latest masterclass where we will teach you how to collect 100 leads per week of social media for free, click the link in the description below, check it out as long as it's still up and I will see you on the other side. Common mistake number one, people focus more on social media than on the actual email list. So I'm going to show you three reasons why email subscribers are much more valuable than social media followers. If someone is scrolling through social media and they come across your profile and they maybe click like or they click follow or they send you a friend request, I'm sorry to break it to you, but it really doesn't mean much. Versus if somebody opts in to your email list because you're handing out a freebie, because you have a newsletter, maybe you're sharing some other valuable information, you're inviting them for a webinar or something else, that is a much more qualified lead. Why? Because they are giving you permission to contact them again in the future. They want to hear from you. They are leaving their email address and maybe even their phone number for you to contact them again and share more information about the things that you do. It's kind of like smiling at somebody at a party and then just walking by and, you know, flirting a little bit and then just going versus actually going over, having a conversation, exchanging phone numbers to set up a next meeting, a date or meet up or whatever it is. See the difference here? So the email subscribers are much more serious, much more interested people versus social media followers and therefore a higher qualified lead. Just to recap very quick, what does cold, warm and hot mean? Okay, so here we have the different stages of a funnel. The funnel has different stages and we measure it with temperature. There is a cold lead, there is a warm lead and there is a hot lead. And the goal of you as a business owner or marketer is it to really warm up your leads. Take them from cold to warm to hot. On top of the funnel, we have the cold leads. That's the widest audience. That's where everyone comes into your funnel. These are social media followers for example then we have the middle the warm people these are your email subscribers and then we have the bottom which are the hot people which is kind of like the lowest hanging fruit people they like you they know you they trust you they're ready to buy from you right now and again your job is it to take them from cold to hot now you see the funnel is getting narrower as you go down which is completely normal because not everyone is the right fit for you not everyone is serious about the thing that you're teaching some people just want to hang out and learn they're never gonna buy so here's an interesting fact 50% of the people you're attracting will never buy the other 50% will buy at some point okay so let's focus on the 50% who are going to buy at some point 15 1 5 out of these 50 who are going to buy at some point are ready right now 15% are ready right now and 85% are going to buy in the next 60 or 90 days or later. So we really need to make sure that we have the right support system set up in the back end in order to keep nurturing those 85%. The major mistake I see so many people make in the industry is they spend so much time and effort and resources in the front end to collect the leads, to acquire the leads, but they don't have the back system set up, which makes it in the front end so much more expensive because as you know right now, 85% of the people are going to buy later. It's the majority of the people and if you don't have any follow-up system set up for them you're just gonna lose the lead they're just gonna turn cold again so going backwards once they were warm or hot if you haven't been in touch for about two to three weeks with your list they go back to being cold I know very bad news so you do need to make sure that you work your email list at all times and you can automate the whole thing it doesn't mean you have to do any of that manually well obviously the first time when you build it but after that it should just be automatically which actually brings me to the sponsor of this video today if you would like to have those funnels set up for you you can click the link in the description below we are using a platform called coach marketing app which replaces 15 16 different apps on the internet right now like kajabi convert kit first promoter click funnels mailchimp and many more it reduces the overwhelm and the cost as well for the user. So all our students get these funnels pre-built, uploaded into their accounts so that they have a head start and don't get overwhelmed with all the tech. If you're interested in becoming a student of ours, click the link in the description below. Book a 15-minute call with me, a brainstorming session where we can brainstorm over your unique situation to see if or how I can help and then we go from there. All right, let's get back into it. Reason number two why email subscribers are more valuable than social media followers. With social media, you are just renting a platform and there will always be restrictions you can't really do what you want it's not your own playground versus with emails and phone numbers you actually own the data it's your digital asset it is the most valuable asset you will have in your entire online business 
because you can decide whenever you want to contact the people that is totally possible you can contact them when you want as much as you want you can say what you want as well which is often not possible on social media you can compare it to like renting a car versus owning a car if you go out and you rent a car you will have to take what's available in the shop right now you will also have restrictions on the amount of miles or kilometers you're allowed to drive per day if you're over that you have to pay extra and also you don't have a say on pricing. Maybe if you decide to extend your rental period, it could probably not be possible because somebody else already booked the car for their own holiday. This will not happen if you own your own car. If you own your own car, you can drive wherever you want, you can drive how far without limitations and you don't have to give it back whenever anyone else is asking for it. That's kind of like the comparison between social media followers and email subscribers. This is a conversation I had with somebody in Messenger the other day. I asked the person, hey, have you built your email list already? She literally said, I have not done that, but I'm trying to do many chat right now. Now I do a whole lot of messaging, which I also would not recommend you to do, especially as a beginner. You are again putting all your eggs into one basket. You are now working with Facebook and ManyChat. It's two different companies who are trying to work with each other and you're coming in as a third party, trying to comply to both of those rules, which is a nightmare, guys. Don't do this. Don't rely on messenger bots and social media if you can build your email list that easily today. Your business goes wherever their business goes, right? With ManyChat, for example, you also cannot say whatever you want. If you do promotion, for example, they will block you. If you use different words, they will block you. If you use the same link too many times, they will block you. And the end result, the actual Facebook page will get banned as well. ManyChat is a great tool later on in the journey when you already have your other lead generation systems in place. And it could be a nice additional tool, but definitely not for the beginners. If Facebook changes their rules, ManyChat has to change their rules and therefore you have to change your own rules again. They own it, they own you, they own the platform, it's not your playground. And really this is how any social media platform works. They want you to spend money on ads and that's their business model. That's why you're not paying to use Facebook, Twitter or any kind of other social media platform. The users are any social media platform's most valuable assets. And again, that's a very dangerous place to build your business. If you build your business on social media purely, you do not have a business. All you have is a dependency. Accounts are constantly being shut down left and right. I don't know about you, but I know a bunch of people who never got their Facebook account back. Including me, my Instagram account got shut down once, over 30,000 followers. No reason. I woke up one day, it's gone. I'm over it. It's a long time ago, about two years ago now. Holy it's gone. Holy. You can't even contact anyone to ask questions. Hey, what happened? It's just gone. You will see the one thing everyone in the online world asks you for if they hand out PDFs, videos, or any kind of freebie or webinars, whatever it is, they will always ask you for your email address and or phone number because they understand it's the most valuable asset in their business. I would like to share this example real quick with you. This is an Instagram influencer who has over 2.6 million followers and wasn't able to sell 36 t-shirts. Now, here's the very interesting thing. These 36 t-shirts were even her own brand. It wasn't some sponsored partnership where you could maybe understand that her followers weren't interested in some other brands items. No, the girl called Ari actually tried to launch her own brand on Instagram. And you would think, okay, if it's her fans, it's her brand, they're more likely to buy, right? Nope. This is foolproof. Even if you have a social media following, it doesn't mean anything, right? I had 200 people following me on Instagram when I started to rebuild up my new Instagram and still made $100,000 in my first year. So don't let these Instagram coaches out there tell you anything else. Okay, reason number three why emails are more valuable than social media followers is the visibility. The reach you get on social media is actually very pathetic compared to sending out emails. If you have a Facebook group, for example, you get between three and 5% reach. So if you have 100 people in a Facebook group, three to five people will actually actually see your post. Versus sending emails, the industry standard open rate is between 20 and 30%. You can reach more if you're really good at email marketing. But compared to social media, if you have 100 people on your list and 20 to 30 people open it, that's already 10 times more compared to social media. So when you have a promotion going on, you can reach your people immediately as well. Versus on social media, you always have to fight with the algorithm. So the money is made when communicating and marketing via email. Let's talk about the click-through rate. The click-through rate on Facebook is 0.7. 7%. Click through rate means if you put out the post, 3% of these people see your post and 0.7% of those 3% will actually click on the thing that you're talking about. Versus email, the click through rate is usually between 3 and 4%. So 3 to 4% of 
those 30% who open the email will actually click on the thing. So again, let's say you have a thousand email subscribers, you will get two to 300 eyeballs on that particular email because it's 20 to 30% open rate, right? Let's say you have thousand followers on Instagram, you get 2% reach on it, which means 20 eyeballs. If you have thousand Facebook friends, let's say you get 5% reach, which is high, right? You get 50 eyeballs on it. So imagine what that could mean for your business if you could have 10 times as much reach. Common mistake number two, people don't know the basics of their own business. I had a conversation with this lady the other day and I asked her, who are your people? Who do you serve? Who is the ideal custom avatar? And she said, everyone. It serves everybody. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. If you speak to everybody, you speak to nobody, okay? You will always have unhappy customers. And that actually shows what kind of a nice person you are if you try to serve everybody. It actually works against you. Because if you're trying to serve everybody, you will never be able to speak to one particular target group exactly. You will never be able to craft the perfect marketing message where people feel spoken to, okay? If you speak to everybody, you can't draft a message which suits everybody. And also another thing, you will always have unhappy customers customers if your results are not tangible if your promise if your marketing message is not tangible tangible means for example hey i promise you join my program and you will learn how to collect 100 leads per week organically on social media that's our tagline for one of our courses right pretty clear so if you join the course you will understand that's what I'm going to learn. You will understand. I'm not going to learn how to run paid ads. I'm not going to learn how to collect thousands of email addresses in one week. I'm going to learn how to collect 100 email addresses per week organically without paid ads. Pretty crystal clear, right? If you don't have this in place, you will always, 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 always have unhappy customers because if you don't set the expectations right, they will set their own expectations, which means if people come in with their own expectations into the program, they expect something particular to happen, which you didn't even think about. You come in with your expectations, what you know you want to deliver, and they come in with their expectations because the communication in your marketing was not clear. Therefore, you will always have complaints, refund requests, things like that, which you actually really don't want to deal with, and you can avoid these things by being crystal clear, picking one audience and serving one particular target customer. Common mistake number three when building your email list and why it will do more harm than good. People use the wrong strategies for the wrong people. For example, cold messaging. Don't get me wrong, cold messaging, cold outreach is a marketing strategy that works really, really well in particular niches for particular products. I don't think for the coaching niche that is appropriate. Let me show you an example. I just want to clarify one thing. I actually like it when somebody pitches me cold if they've done their research and if it's something I need, okay? But this person, for example, reached out to me cold in Messenger and talked about how she enrolled into an online shopping club that manufactures consumer goods in the US. She pitched me a video about this and she also claimed how this really helped her husband to fight some allergy. So this person has done zero research. I'm not in the US. I don't have any allergies. I don't care about a video. I have never put up my hand anywhere where I said, yes, I want to watch the video. That's the difference, right? If people raise their hand and they want the thing and they say yes to the thing you're offering, sure, message them, reach out to them, but not like this randomly. But also, as I said just earlier, I actually like it if somebody slides into my DMs and I didn't raise my hand somewhere. They did the work up front. They did their research about me. Okay, she is my target audience. She seems to have this problem. She's exactly there at this stage in her business. I have the solution to her problem. Here it is. If the product is something I really need right now and if it helps me, I don't care cold pitching. I actually appreciate it because that helps me, helps me save time to try and go out and look for the person I need to look for. So if you decide to do this, do your own research before and be 100% crystal clear that it is the right thing for the right person. Common mistake number four, using the wrong or irrelevant content, giving away too much, only promote or not at all and are very inconsistent. Let's talk about the three characters real quick and maybe you can identify yourself with one or the other. So this is Valia Victor. Valia Victor is a really good person. He really wants to change the world and he keeps putting out content all the time. All the, all the time. Every day he just pumps out content. He never asks for the sales and he is very consistent actually. If that's you, let me know in the chat below. Personality number two, we have Promotion Petra. Promotion Petra is constantly promoting her offers and her products, but actually really never provides any value to her audience. And then we have personality number three, 
inconsistent Ines. Ines sometimes provides value, she sometimes put out some offers, but she's very inconsistent. She doesn't follow up, she doesn't have a back-end system set up. She just really gets up and does it out of motivation in the morning. She doesn't feel like it, she doesn't find any ideas to post, she'll just not do it. Which one are you? Let me know in the comments below. Are you value victor? Are you constantly getting content value, value, value to the audience, but you don't really promote too much? You maybe feel a little bit shy to ask for the sale. Or are you promotion pitch? Are you very confident and you really want to get your word out there, but you're lacking a little bit of presenting value? Or are you inconsistent Enos? you just can't manage to be consistent in your marketing strategy, let me know in the comments below. What all these three characters have in common is there's no system set up in the back end. There's no real content strategy set up. And the three characters are also not clear on the basics either. Because if they had set up those three things, everything would be fine. They would provide the right value at the right time. They would ask for the sale at the right time. And they would also be consistent. And common mistake number five is not having the correct funnels set up in the back end. I kind of mentioned this at the beginning of this video, if you do not have the systems set up in the back end for the follow up, for example, your email list will just act like a bathtub with a hole. You're just seeing all your leads going down the train without ever doing anything with them. You can imagine it like a bucket with holes. You keep pouring water into the bucket, like in top of your funnel, but then all those leads are trickling out of your funnel without you ever getting anything in return. And that really ties back to what I've said earlier. 50% of the people are ready to buy right now. 50% will never buy. So let's talk about the 50% which will buy. 15 are ready to buy right now. 85 are ready to buy in the next 60 or 90 days or later. So we need to make sure we have systems, funnels, all of that stuff set up in the back end so that the machine can just keep nurturing them for whenever they are ready to take the leap. If you want to watch the full class, click the link in the description below, learn how to build a profitable email list, and I will see you on the other side. Thanks so much for watching.